the right. We'll call it the least is a part of me. The least is a part of me. And you're going to see what that means when we go along here. Matthew 25, verse 34. This is when the Lord says he's going to gather the sheep and the goats. He's going to divide them. Verse 34 says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, and I heard the kingdom prepare for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungry, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto, the, unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Amen. Praise God. I want you to notice, church, praise God. I got some notes I just want you to think about. Amen. When Christ, praise God, Christ is the personal object of everything you do to the saints. If you get that, when you do something for a child of God, guess who you're really doing it for? Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the object of it, praise God. Amen. So when you think about this, when they in love, when they found a saint hungry and they fed him, they found Christ hungry and they fed him. Amen. When they took a cup of water and they brought it and gave it to somebody, they actually gave it to Jesus Christ to quench his thirst. You see that in that, what we just read? Amen. It was Jesus that they saw naked and cold and they put the warm clothes upon them. You see that? It was actually Christ that they went to and visited when they went to the prison. Praise God. I mean, it was Christ's bedside that they went to and sat down and, and prayed or, or talked to the person that was sick. Amen? Whatever you do to a saint, praise God, you're doing it actually to the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Amen? All the saved people on the face of the earth, is a part of His person. Amen? For we are members of His body. Amen? Of His body, of His flesh, of His bones. And when we do to the least, we do it to Him. Praise the Lamb of God. And notice He said the least of these, my brethren. Praise God. Amen? He's not talking about apostles or bishops or pastors. Praise God. Amen? He's talking about the very least. If you even do something for the very least saint, you're doing it for Jesus. Amen? They might be the weakest in the faith you ever saw, brother, but they're in the faith. Um, amen? They might be the poorest of the poor, but they're in the faith. Um, and he says, when you do it to the least of these, uh, amen, you're doing it to me. And he loves everybody equal. You know, he don't love the preacher more than the, the person sitting in the pew. Amen. He don't love the rich man more than the poor man. He loves everybody the same. It's the perfect love of God. And he says, when you do it to the least of these, my brethren, you're actually doing this to me. And they're like, Lord, when did we see you naked? When did we see you hungry? They was astonished at that, Brother Kellis. Looks like we would know. Amen. Looks like they would know that when you do something for a child of God, you're doing it to the Lord Jesus Christ. We should know that, but it seems like we forget. They forgot, amen? They forgot, but you know what? The least thing you do for a saint is going to be rewarded. He said, if you give a cup of cold water to somebody just because he's my disciple, you'll not lose your reward. A cup of cold water, Brother Kellis, praise God. Now he said that was the righteous because they're going into the kingdom. Amen? That was his sheep. And how, what made them righteous, praise God? Well, they were saved and they were full of the love of God to the point, praise God, where they would do good to their brethren even if it was the least of the brethren. They were saved. Not really me. saved. Not seen right way. Really saved, brother. Amen? And they, their love showed in their works. And that's the only way you can show your love, isn't it? Praise God. But you read on with me because 
Verse 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me. You're cursed into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungry, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. You said that was one word different. He said, you did it not unto the least of these my brethren. Do you realize there's punishment for neglect? There's punishment for neglect. The Bible says if you know to do good and you don't do it, it is a sin on to you. And these people neglected to do good to the least of his brethren. Did you see that? If we withhold good from a brother or a sister, we withhold it from Jesus Christ himself. Praise God. And we've got to be careful. We have respect to every member of Christ's body. Amen? Praise God. That's his sin. Samuel said, if I don't pray for you, he said, I'm not going to sin against God and not pray for you. Remember that? And Samuel said that to Israel when they was taking Saul for a king. He said, I ain't going to stop praying for you and sin. He knew if I neglect my duty towards you, I'm sinning. Right? And that's what he just said. You didn't feed me. You didn't give me clothes. You didn't give me water. You didn't visit me. You didn't come by my bedside when I was sick. You didn't do none of these things to me. They said, when, Lord? When you didn't do it to the least, you didn't do it me. And they went away to everlasting punishment. Neglect. Now think, if punishment comes for neglect, what does what comes for injury when you injure the Lord's body? Saul was walking for the road of Damascus. Some say he was riding. And the Lord stopped him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You remember that? He never done anything to actually to Jesus. Who was he persecuting? His church, his body. Why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. I'm Jesus, the one that you're persecuting, the one that you're hurting. It's me. Amen? If Christ, amen, judges those that neglect his brethren, what will be the end of them that injure his brethren? When you hurt the least of his, you hurt him. You understand that? If you hurt the least of his brethren, you hurt the Lord Jesus Christ. When you steal from one of his, you steal from Jesus Christ. You understand that? When you destroy something that belongs to one of the brethren, you destroy something that's the Lord Jesus's. Amen? The threats you make towards one of his least, no matter how low you might think they be, you're threatening the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? It's against him. The slander you speak against somebody, you speak it against the Lord Jesus Christ. The gossip you repeat against somebody, you speak it against the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The wicked names people speak against his brethren. Amen. You speak it to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Do you understand this? The hatred you have in your heart towards one of his brethren, no matter how low they are, it's truly towards the Lord Jesus Christ. The bitterness you have towards any of the brethren, you have it towards 
the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, the anger, indignation you might have against any of the brethren, you actually have it towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Why persecutest thou me? Good question, ain't it? Why are you persecuting me? Lord, we love you, Lord. Why persecutest thou me? The man say, I love God and hateth his brother or sister. He is a liar. Amen. It's not in him. Amen. For he, praise God, for he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? It is impossible. Amen. I cannot love Jesus if I cannot love my brothers and sisters. And this is the commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Ain't no other way, are they? I can't hate my brother and be saved. Impossible. I am absolutely in darkness, in death, if I have hatred in my heart against my brother. It's that simple. I am a lost man. How do you know you love God? Lip service don't mean much, does it? It's manifest in loving your brethren. As you do it to the least of these, you've done it on to me. He said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, you know I love you, Lord. He said, you feed my sheep. That's how you show the love, Peter. You do what I've called you to do. You obey me. You love me. Now how much, let me ask you this, how much do you love God? Here's the true measuring stick, and this is a short, pointed, plain message. How much do you really love God? This is pretty much Jesus' philosophy. However it is between us and the least of our brethren, that's how it is between me and Him. Amen. Amen. Come on. However it is between me and the least of my brethren, that's how it is between me and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. However you love the least, no matter who you estimate to be the least, that's how much you love Jesus. Amen. The Lord could say, how much you love the least of these my brethren is how much you really love me. Couldn't he say that? However much you love the least of my brethren, that's how much you really love me. Amen? Now if we was like we're supposed to be, we could say, well, I love every child of God exactly the same. I love them with all my heart. If we can't say that, then we don't love Jesus with all our heart. You understand that? We don't love everyone. All our brothers, it's not just in River Ridge. It's hard enough people having trouble with that. If we love each other, all our brothers and sisters, with all our heart, then we know something about perfect love. And we would love Jesus with all our heart. If you ask yourself, you think of the least, whoever that comes to your mind, you don't say yourself, think of somebody else outside yourself, that's a top out. And you see how much you love that person. And that's how much you love Jesus. And you say, I love him all my heart. If you did, you would not injure your brother or your 